Hi, I'm Elaine Harding. Welcome to my blog at stampwithelaine.com. Now, I love playing around with shapes and today's box has a cathedral arch with a petal top closure. I've made this box out of basic white thick cardstock and stamped my images on basic white and coloured them all in with stamping blends alcohol markers. This was my prototype. I made it with the Dragonfly Garden, I think it is. Yes, I used this stamp set to stamp on it and coloured it with the new in colours. But unfortunately, this is what happened. It bled. So then I made this one, which is from the Elephant Parade Bundle on page 48 of the new 2022 to 23 annual catalogue. You can find the dies on page 162 and aren't they just adorable these little elephants? The design so that they can go through the mini die cutting machine. So I went back to the drawing board and I thought oh it would make quite a sweet little box using this elephant parade bundle. Now because there are so many little images I just mounted my stamps on an acrylic plate and use the Stamparatus to stamp all my images in one go. So I mounted the stamps far enough apart so that they could all be stamped at once on a template which I then die cut to create the templates and I put painter's tape on the back so that when I cut out my blanks I can just put them back on here like I've done for some of these. I put them in a little box like this and then these blanks you can then put the dies together like this. So at the first cut making my template all these dies were separate but then when it comes to cutting the blanks you can condense it and put them really close together like that so that it will fit on a piece of cardstock that is narrow enough to go through the mini die cutting machine. So instead of positioning each die over a stamped image, this will save you a lot of time and you can pick the dies up all at once in one go. And I did some separate ones for the balloons. There's a pair of bows and some grass. So if I want to die cut those in a coloured cardstock, I can. Same with the bows. Now this one is actually a stamped image and there's a separate die for that. In fact, there is a pair of the ground nut ones. And this trio of ground nuts actually embosses at the same time so you want to die cut those in a sort of crumb cake cardstock or Sahara sand anything that's sort of brownish let me see if I can find some yeah I die cut some in um, the, the crumb cake cardstock can you see that so I've explained how I created the template. Now I can pop my blanks in. So to begin with you need Tuxedo Black Memento ink. So I'm going to ink all this up and stamp the blanks. And then you can remove them all. So long as you don't move your stamps and it's in the same position, you can keep the same template because that's the original stamped image that you stamped and then subsequently die cut to make your template. Cut multiples of blanks and just keep using it until you've finished making all your cards or projects with it. These are the blends I use to colour the elephants with. Smoky Slate and Petal Pink. This little flower here I used Sweet Sorbet and Parakeet Party 
for the leaves I used Parakeet Party for the mouse and the peanut I used Crumb Cake and for the balloon I used Starry Sky the butterfly I used a combination of Sweet Sorbet and Mango Melody to save time I've already coloured in my elephants and at the same time I put Tombow glue on the back and allowed it to dry um, because Tombow glue if you apply it wet it's permanent but if you allow the Tombow to dry once you've applied it it will act like a post-it note and it will be repositionable so I've done that for all these and we'll set that aside and then construct the box. So the other tools you might need um, to make this box, this has retired, it's a two and a half inch circle punch um, because I wanted to neaten up the edges uh, on the box. Or you can use one of the layering circle dies that measure approximately two and five eight inches that you can trace around to create your semicircles at the top. It will all become clear and demonstrate how to do it. And if you don't have anything that's the right size, then you can use a compass. So the radius of the circle will be one and a quarter inches. Measure one and a quarter. And then draw um, around it like that. So you need a scoreboard and a piercing mat because you need something soft um, while you're trying to emboss. So this is my template. You can take a screenshot of this if you wish. Uh, this is the reverse because I couldn't fit all the information onto one side. With the short side at the top, you score at one and a quarter inches and five and a half inches. Then step two, you rotate your cardstock so that the wider panel is at the top and your first score line partially scored up to this first score line here and you score that at one and a quarter inches down to that first score line then at three and three quarter inches down to this score line six and a quarter inches down to the score line and eight and three quarter inches all this is partial scoring okay and then at 10 inches you want to score all the way down for step three you flip the cardstock over so that the half inch score line all the way down is on your right and the narrow scored section is at the top then you want to score at two and a half inches, five inches, and seven and a half inches, all partially scored. In metric, this will work out slightly smaller. So your cardstock will be 25.5 by 20 centimeters. Your first score line is at three centimeters, and your second is at 14 centimeters on the short side. Okay, then orient your cardstock so that the long side is at the top and your first score line will be partially scored to this score line here and it's at 3 centimeters, 9 centimeters, 15 centimeters, 21 centimeters partially scored and then all the way down at 24 down to the bottom. Now flip your cardstock over and you want to score at 6, 12 and 18. I'm just going to fold this a little bit so you can see the score lines a bit better. And then you need um, a dinner plate. This is roughly about nine and a half inches. The narrow bit should be at the top. Okay, that's the top of your box. That's where you need to <clears throat> have your semicircles. This one is at the bottom so you want to draw your arches from this corner to here that corner down to here and you need a 
round plate. Before I do that, I'm just going to score, say, just a little bit up, sort of halfway. Okay, there's no precise measurement. It's because the arch, if you carry on the arch, it's going to be out of alignment. So if you score up um, straight with the score lines, continue the score lines from the bottom of your box, which is the wider panel, then this will meet in the middle like that and it'll be nice and neat. I hope that makes sense. You want your cardstock with a narrow bit at the top. And the reason why you have a cushion, a foam pad, is so you can score it properly. So put your stylus there. And you want it at the point. And position it so that um, you know, your, when you do your scoring, the stylus will carry on with that vertical line you've just drawn up there, okay? So I'm all going to do it all on one side. Can you see that? So that's the start of your curve. So I'm just going to do it all on one side and then swap it round afterwards. Now I want to score in the other direction, so I'm going to turn my card upside down so it's easier to access. And you want to score from this point. Now you need to draw your circle to create the petal top. You can do it one of three ways. You can either trace around the circle from the layering circle dies. So you want that to touch the top and you want the two sides to be in between the two score lines. So you can either do that and you can use a compass to draw your semicircle. Inevitably it will leave a hole in the middle of your paper so you can draw a semicircle like that or you can use the template from um, punching out the two and a half inch circle and put it on there and have the let's put that there because it's sturdier and you want that to reach the top and that in between the two lines Obviously this is the one that's most accurate because the width of the box is two and a half inches. Now these two I'm going to cut in half um, and then emboss it to finish off the top neatly. Okay. Now this section here where um, there's a tab that goes all the way down, you don't want to cut that at all. You only want to cut the narrow end up to that tab like so. Now we've um, drawn our semicircles for the petal top. We want to cut up straight up on the score lines. Do not cut this tab. This uh, half inch score line that goes all the way down, you want to keep that and you don't want to cut into it at all because it's the overlap for joining the box together of the two halves of the box to make up the one square panel. The middle panel will be the one in the front. Easiest way to cut my semicircle is to cut down the flaps. Fold that back. Now that's a really rough cut. 
So now I want to cut my circles in half. So I line it up at the one and a quarter inch mark and cut. Painted Posies 3D embossing folder. This is new. To pop the semicircles I cut previously and lay them on top. Make sure that there is a flower on each one. And then just go and emboss that with just the grey plate. So now we're ready to reinforce the score lines. So just pinch it. It's pretty easy to come together. Grease that. in both directions so that it will fold better. And the same with this. So put tear and tape in two sections, one on this side, on the long side, and one on the short side. So remove the tape. Don't remove this one yet. Bend that back so you can align the bottom with that score line there so that the top marries up as well. Okay, now you can do the bottom bit. two side panels in first. Just a bit of glue. Make sure it's square. You don't want it to go out of shape. Then the bit where the join is goes in next. I'm going to trim this off a bit at an angle so it doesn't show. Pop that on. Make sure that's down properly. And then the last panel, which is the front of the box. Then you see the this the top, you just fold that down like that, and then the last one you tuck in underneath, so that closes up. But I'm not very good at putting it all perfectly round, so that's why I've done this and make sure that there's glue all over the semicircle and glue that on to give it a nice neat finish. Then when you close the box, so you go one, two, three, that's the last one, and tuck that last one in, and that will close perfectly. So look for the back, that's the back, and the back has just the leaf and the mouse. So I'm going to pop the leaf here and the mouse. And voila, there's your box finished. Before I go, here's a card made with Elephant Parade and also the floral. I can't remember what they're called. The split card textures dies. The other day I featured this one for the wisteria and um, this time it's the floral one. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Thanks for joining me and I'll be back soon with more inspiration. Don't forget the links to the supplies are below this video in the show more section. 
You can also find me on Facebook, Pinterest or Instagram. If you'd like to read more, then there's a link to the blog post below this video as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.